Hi, it's July 8th. It's been pretty warm around here. We haven't had much rain. The other day I had a subscriber send in a question about the mulch. What I put in it, if I added fertilizer, a few things like that. Let's go over what I do for this deep mulch and where it came about. If you've been following my channel, you know I hate to hoe. So what I was trying to do was eliminate the weeds. I used to lose that battle every year about the middle of June. And then the day after that, I would lose a battle with the stink bugs. And so I was really just looking for a way to stop the weeds. And I didn't want to use any herbicides. Then I stumbled across leaf mold. And from that, there was a whole series of different people that used different kinds of mulches. Deep mulch, no dig. Then I come across roost stout. Now, Ruth Stout made a little bit of sense. Okay, so she wanted to plant. She was old school. They came and tilled up. She was waiting for that guy to come till that day. He was late. She was mad. She's sitting there in the garden wanting to plant. You know, nice warm day. And she got to looking at the weeds and thinking, nobody's tilling it up for you. How do you grow? Oh, seeds just fall on the ground. They come in contact with the soil and they grow. So that's kind of how she started. Then she realized if she covered with hay, it would retain the moisture. It would keep some of the other seeds, the wild seeds from growing. And that's sort of how she came about. Then I came across several people using what they were calling leaf mold. And that's just basically fallen leaves. Then I, ran, then I came across back to Eden, and that is wood chips. Then I came across no dig, and that's just straight compost. Each and every one of these fit my bill as far as not needing to weed. So I was pretty interested in all of these. Then I got to doing a little more research. I came across some university studies about the soil, soil profile, soil health, the symbiotic relationship between the microbes in the soil and the plants, that all soils, whether they're clay, whether they're sand, whether they're loam, whether they're a mixture of all, really does have all the nutrients that a plant needs. It just needs some way to get those nutrients broken down small enough that the roots can take them up. Now there's a web of life in the soil, and a lot of these the back to Eden, the leaf mold, the no dig, the no till, all these kind of skirted around the issues, but it's basically do not disturb the soil once you get it going. It create that web of life. When you run a rototiller across your garden, it busts that web of life up and then it takes it a year or so to rebuild. During that time, you have to add fertilizer so you have something available for the plants. It's kind of a vicious circle. So I'm probably not going to do this justice, but from what I understand from the research I've done, the micro rhizome, the microscopic life under the soil takes and frees up any of the minerals that the plant plants need. During the plant's growing cycle, during its photosynthesis, it produces a sugar. It trades that sugar through its roots to the micro rhizomes as sort of a food or a barter system, the micro rhizomes trades back the minerals that the plant needs. Thus, there's a symbiotic relationship. Some people say the leaves are acidic. If you till them in, there's no oxygen, they go anaerobic, and, and it can create an acidy type of environment. The same thing with the wood chips. You till it in, it becomes anaerobic, it break down very slowly, and it can become acidic. Both of them, when you put them in the soil, they bind up with the nitrogen that's in the soil. I can't give you the exact chemistry behind it. All I know is you don't want to till the leaves or the wood chips in. It's better if you just put them on top. You let the worms, you let the fungus, you let the bacteria eat the leaves and the wood chips. The worms will soften up the ground and also add castings, which is a really nice natural fertilizer. They can move through the soil without breaking up that web of life. Well, now that we've established what not to do with your organics, then what kind of organics do you want to use? What kind of leaves? What kind of wood chips? What kind of hay? 
what kind of grass. We're back at our four foot compost pile. This is an example of what can you use for the deep mulch? What kind of mixture? For a hot compost, we wanna use greens and browns just like we have in the wheelbarrow. When we originally started this in December, I needed to clean the leaves out of the yard. So I started piling them up. Then I started gathering leaves everywhere I could and I started piling them up. And so our first year was nothing but leaves, going with the leaf mold. That broke down very quickly. It went from one foot thick of uncrushed leaves down to bare soil in less than a summer. The worms work really, really well. That nutrients was taken up by the plants really quickly. Then throughout that summer, as we gathered grass, we made large piles around the perimeter knowing that we were gonna spread it out. That was hot compost. Didn't have much brown in it. Although as we were mowing, we were picking up old dead grass and we were picking up other browns. So we sort of mixed it as we went and we just piled it up. As far as fertilizers, we don't add any fertilizers. As far as any other amendments, some eggshells. We put those in, that's part of the kitchen scraps. These yellow totes are awesome. They're really good for harvesting. They're also good for moving mulch. Now obviously my mix varies depending on what I have available and as we're expanding the garden. At the far northeast corner, this is the very newest part of the garden. This is primarily wood chips. We'll look at a few spots, but this is primarily wood chips. And even as dry as it's been, look how far down I am. Just, just scratching the surface. And that's wet. I'm not gonna dig down, I'm not gonna dig into the soil. Mosquitoes. I'm not gonna dig into the soil because I don't wanna disturb the microrhizones. If you noticed any time I planted throughout the year, I would just pull the mulch back in that area, dig a, the smallest hole I could, backfill, and then put the mulch back around it. But this is holding the moisture. This is what we want. It's not into the soil. There is definitely a layer. There is definitely soil, and then your wood chips. This also has, I mean, this does have leaves in it but I had more wood chips available at the time I put this little area in. We'll look at a few places that were more established. Let me grab some of this fresh grass. All right, come on with me. This, I've had a year and a half of grass and leaves build up. We ran some hay out across here. I've got another big bale of hay coming within the week, so we'll be top dressing with hay. Thing about hay, you want cured hay or rotted hay. You don't want brand new fresh hay. But this mulch, these leaves are crushed down. I kind of like the idea of crushing them down. We have, we have a couple kind of poisonous snakes in Oklahoma and the real fluffy leaves. When you're walking on them to begin with, you're, oh, ankle deep, maybe a little deeper. You can't see what's in here. By crushing them down, you have more of a carpet it, you have more of a view of what may be in here. There may be stuff underneath here we don't want to mess with, but we're not messing with it. But see here, again, you just dig down a little bit, and there's plenty of moisture in that. And not 20 feet away, the clay is so hard you cannot drive the pitchfork in it. And so this, I mean, you just keep adding this to the top. And you continually do that across your entire garden. If you got a thin spot, you add it a little thicker. That's my mix. There's nothing special about it. If you're following my story, we'll see if it actually works. So far, the results seem to be pretty good. My garden is growing better than it has ever grown. The stink bugs, I still have half of my plants that are thriving. They've taken out the other half, but usually, Year after year, by the 1st of July, they're all gone. We have more tomatoes than we've ever had. 
We're picking 10, 15 pounds of cucumbers every other day. Okay, I found a piece of grass that's growing. It's right in the mulch. You just run it, there's nothing to it. This is thin, we're right down to the soil. But even with that much on there, look how, look how much moisture is in here. We have a sweet potato, those roots are deep. It's still got plenty of moisture. Our kale, those roots are deep. It's still got plenty of moisture. But it is amazing how fast, when we started, remember when I opened up the trench for the kale? Look how deep that is. Now look how deep that is. There's almost nothing left, so we're gonna have to come back and freshen that up. You can go ahead and add four or five inches on top of there and not hurt anything. So that's my trick. There is no trick. That's my recipe, there is no recipe. You don't want to till. Any kind of leaves, any kind of wood chips will work with one caveat. If you go to a cabinet maker and they got a whole bunch of fine sawdust, it's never gonna break down if you just put it on top of your garden. If you're gonna try to grow stuff through it, it won't work. The wood chips you get from a company that clears trees and brush, that is the best stuff. And the more it breaks down, the better it is. Remember, you want to put this stuff at least four inches thick to start with. Anywhere that we dug trenches had a pretty good mixture of grass, wood chips, and leaves. And this is pretty thick. It was pretty thick. Look at that soil. Look how nice that is underneath there. Now I've not found any dictionary with the actual definitions of what back to Eden, roost stout, no-till, grass clippings, hay, leaf mold, none of these. I've heard different people interchange these terms. I think you've heard me interchange these terms. I've sort of taken the best from all of them that I've found through my research and I mixed them together and that is my deep mulch. And with this kind of approach, I do not have to weed. I guess the one overarching theme to all of these methods I've just described is how do things grow in nature? They don't have anybody there planting them. They don't have anybody there tending them. Trees fall, they break down. They become part of the soil. Leaves fall, they break down. They become part of the soil. So if you're interested in doing a deep mulch, there is no recipe. You want at least four inches minimum to keep the weeds down. But if you want to put six, seven, eight, 10 inches down, you're not gonna create a hot compost environment. You'll just create an environment, be like a great big worm farm. That's what I found in the fall when you're cleaning up your yard. Don't bag that stuff and throw it away. Pile it up on your garden. Anyhow, I hope that answers your question about the mulch and what I do. Just remember, you wanna have it at least four inches thick, and you wanna keep adding to it. When they ask Ruth Stout, how much do you put down? Her answer was, more and I can do that I can put more down all right thank you for coming to my garden thank you for listening to me ramble on come on let's plant you can do this come on let's plant let's go plant garden